Hello my friends from Switzerland, it's me Daniel Ambul and Benjamin Haring, my friend and we have good news for you, very good news. Benjamin has finished his book Breeding Beatles, congratulations. Thank you very It's much. really a fantastic, it's the Bible, of the new Bible of uh, <laughs> beetle breeding now and um, I hope that you explain to us a little bit uh, what is what we can find inside the book and what yep. you can expect from it. I will do that. Yes, it's a 400 pager, uh, has a lot of images. Um, maybe first about the cover, um, my Very friend nice. Michael Held helped me and it's a real photo shoot. It's not photo sh uh, there's some Photoshop work obviously to get everything together, but it was a real studio setup. I was surprised myself when he just went big and we had like I think a meter 20 or meter 50 times 2 meters almost in, in, in <laughs> space and built up with the line and then place all the beetles um, take photos. So this was, I think, almost a day and a night work. Incredible. It's very nice. So it's quite nice. Yeah. yeah. You can search all of the little beetles that you see. There must be a dozen. The two dozen. No, there's like, I think we had almost 25 to 30 20. species. I don't even remember, but there's a lot <laughs> actually oh, hidden but here. Um, and, but we wanted to give this jungle look. We didn't want to have like one beetle on front, but really say like this is how a habitat could look like. I mean, obviously the plants are not all right and the beetles would never occur in nature like this, but this is typical beetle habitat. You have wood, you have mushrooms, you have moss and plants, and you have this forest feeling, um, which is, I think, really nice. That's how these animals live together with plants and mushrooms. That's a, a habitat that they share for 400 million years. Yeah. And that's why they have such a big diversity that is so interesting for us because there are thousands of interesting species. So it's the substantial guide, huh? Yeah. And that's really too <laughs> nice for us a little bit. What, okay, I will. What is inside? Um, yes, so um, <clears throat> as that's 400 pages. Um, and I, I structured it roughly around how to say the, the introduction to, to the topic. Um, how it developed, um, then breeding, how to say, specialties or breeding basics, I will show that. Um, in the beginning it's mostly about, hey, why is beetle breeding such a cool, important hobby? <laughs> That's interesting, what? That is not a beetle, That's uh... No, this is the biggest roach in the roach, world. Roach, yeah, okay. And um, they found one species of um, beetle, which they keep finding more, it's a cohabitation. So they, Designatus platocomus, platocomus means lives with um, roaches. Oh, okay. So the larva and the beetles live together with them, they develop <laughs> together. Interesting partnership. It's yeah. in Australia, but uh, now I, I read recently they also found a myrmecophilus, so with ant living lucanid. Ah, okay. Beetle. In China, so it's like mind blowing Incredible. what nature does. Yeah, but that's oh, oh, that's because 400 million years is a long time, and you can develop a lot of relationships to other yeah. uh, living <laughs> organisms. It's yeah. quite cool. Interesting. Then it's a bit about um, the whole history of yeah. uh, how did it develop in Japan, how did it develop in, in other places, and also your history with beetles that is now already a long. 20 years or something. More than 20 years now. But, uh, I, I'm getting old. <laughs> no, no. That, so you started when you were how old? 16. 16. Yeah. So that's... <laughs> yeah. no, no. And um, then there's a lot of uh, also how to get them. I mean, this is your pictures, Danny. You went to Niasoso and met yeah. all those guys yeah. who collect. It's really quite cool. Yeah. Um, how to catch. Yeah. I mean, I really wanted to have a holistic view on that. That's things. great. Yeah. And then um, really how to breed, how to set up. And then the special part, uh, maybe not so interesting for um, for the Japanese and uh, say Taiwanese who know all the details, is really our struggle in Europe, how to make flake soil, how to understand kinchi and so on. Yeah. So we have now worked together with different people in the world. <laughs> and um, we did, or you especially, did a lot of um, experiments to come up with really cool things like a homemade um, unsterile kinshi which really helps people in Europe to to breed more um, stag beetles or let's say not in Europe everywhere in the world outside um, the hubs of course we would we would wish that we could find in every yeah. shop some <laughs> like that like in Japan but yeah we we cannot find them here it's and it's very expensive to import yep. them so for a lot of people who have not um, so much money it's important that they can do it themselves and also i have to say if you try to do it yourself like you describe here also in detail uh, i think it might be interesting for somebody who loves to to work with nature and to experiment a little bit it's also yeah very interesting it makes part of the, make, makes the hobby more fun, right? Yeah. You, and you learn yeah. so much more. I mean, I learned, yeah. I mean, you got into beetles because I, I told you, and I learned yeah. so much about mushrooms and fungi. It's just like yeah. a whole new world. And sometimes I'm wondering if I like the mushrooms more or the beetles. Yeah. <laughs> so originally we met 
because uh, Benjamin came to a workshop for breeding, uh, uh, cultivating mushrooms um, to me, and so that, that's how we met. Yeah. And then you told me that you are here because you want to produce food for beetle, feed for beetle. Yeah. And that started. <laughs> um, so, so did you see that my that's my workshop uh, material for uh, cultivation of um, mushrooms? Yeah, and that's how you make kinchi. There's different methods. Make yeah. it unsterile, additives, whatever. Then there's a lot of these, how to say, special tricks, parameters, which you can work on or not, um, to, to get better in breeding. Let's now start. Let's now start. Let's now start. Let's now start. Yes, learning from mistakes. That's one of the things that you all always said. Yeah, we lo we don't learn from the from the good luck that we had that somebody no. f uh, worked, but we we learn from the mistakes and from the problems. Yeah, yeah. like terrible mushroom uh, fungi attacking yeah. um, earthworms. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and all other sorts of um, things which can go wrong. Yeah, but that's and where it's, yeah, it's really because good. normally we tend to. To, to not to speak about the things that didn't work. So, also in the forums, um, hardly you find somebody talking about the faults he did, you know. Everybody wants just to pose himself as the, the best breeder in the world, yeah. But I, that's my theory. I think most people who do it for a long time have probably failed more species than they succeeded. Yeah. I think just, uh, well, I no th offense to anyone, I mean, maybe some people are really yeah, good, but I definitely messed up a lot of species because yeah, sometimes... Yeah, and if we would speak openly about the, the mistakes we did and, and the things that didn't work, it would be good also for the others. Yeah. Because otherwise we repeat only the fault that others did before. The, uh, and it's hard when you have rare species, yeah. huh? something. But, yeah. And then we get into species part, right? So oh, I've structured yeah. into, this is like two thirds of the book, structured into, how to say, breeding of specific, how to say, genuses, families, species, um, stuck, or like how to say, separated by um, Lucanidae, um, Cetonine, and um, Dynastidae, and really in detail for the um, genuses. You can see still my love for. Lucanide is yeah, stronger yeah, yeah. than the rest, so I, I, have, I have really detailed descriptions there, but I have bred everything else, so um, the other parts are as big, but Lucanide is really something I, I enjoy breeding a lot, and um, that's why you get very detailed breeding reports. And it's also nice that it's a personal book of your breeding experience, you know, it's not just a, a scientific book, it's also a, a personal experience book. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, yeah. And I, I try to structure some mating and, and all the tips and tricks. And then always when I had habitat because, shots yeah. and things which, um, how to find them, how they live. Because that can give a lot of ideas on how to wow. keep them proper. Yeah, nice pictures. Yeah, it was good. I mean, this is the advantage if you do a hobby for a long time. Because yeah. you keep taking pictures and collect. So I really had like a lot of them. I still did get a lot of pictures from other friends who were like more focused on maybe other species which I didn't photograph. But overall, I think we have quite a complete That's great. review of things which have been, how to say, kept in captivity. And kept. what I have to say that it's only also Benjamin that made the layout of the book. He, oh, yeah. You made it yourself. This book was fully made by yourself. You write it, you will make the photos, you will lay, make the layout, everything. So how was that experience for you? That was good. I mean, it was basically all your inspiration of doing books and telling me, Benjamin, you should do it yourself because if you do it yourself, you get um, you get all the freedom you want. You can take the pictures you want. You don't have anybody else interfering. Yeah. And um, you can take as much um, space as you want. That was one good advice yeah. from you where you said, hey, yeah. don't don't shorten yourself. Don't limit yourself. Just lay out with like all the freedom in the world. And that's what I um, then did, and it was a lot of fun. It was a very good experience, and it was very good in my job. I'm not so creative anymore, so it was very good to be <laughs> creative again, and then, then uh, what to say, work with layout and work with something new for me. And uh, it's really a nice experience, and probably also you thought, yeah, if Daniel can make his book. No, 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 no. I can make it. I, I ask you for a lot. I ask you for a lot of help, actually, because no, I asked that's it. Great. It's, it's, you made a fantastic book. It's so inspiring, also with these pictures, with all. All the love that is in these pictures, also because they are not uh, not uh, they are living yeah. uh, specimens. That, yeah. and that's something which I felt. And this was, is oops, always sorry. special. Yeah, something which I felt was interesting in this one is um, it's, it's hard to get these books because normally you're quite limited in your freedom, right? If you work with somebody else. Yeah, that's and here the, I could just really. This is 
like me, how, how yeah, I, I wanted great. it. So that's the part I liked the most. It was really just... And I like really. that also the most. Also, I've, I've re- I have read a lot of uh, your articles that you have written also, and this personal view of somebody who is in the thing, who, who lives with this uh, animal, that's something special. It's not, uh, it's not a scientific view from the distance. It's quite, you are in this a book, <laughs> you know, with these animals. So like here, the people are with these animals also in because they share the habitat. Yeah. Also, we humans we share the habitat with with these uh, beetles. That's for Coleotto. That's another uh, p- project probably that you will uh, talk about and show. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's quite a few. I mean, now they have found Jonathan Dyer has found Cassicus, right? So all the Coleotto. Yeah, from yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still way too expensive, so I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing that there's quite the hype on uh, Cassicos and the prices are quite high. But Regius is bred quite commonly. Um, Goliatus Goliatus is, has become easier. Yeah. And um, also of the jelly we talked last time, I think in one of the last videos, that helps me a lot. So I feed every four days and um, get relatively good weight results. So I'm, I'm working on really how to make it simple for myself. So that would probably be your next book about. Yeah, that's something we promised each other. We would do together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, yeah. those history and then. Yeah, yeah that was ten years ago that I started with yeah. this, with this stuff. Wow. You've done a lot. So that's also nice with all these pictures. I promise you, it's really the Bible. So if you like uh, beetles uh, at pets, or just wa- want to have a, a view how they live together with mushrooms and plants and humans, that's the book you, have, you must have. And maybe a special thing here in the end, ah, yeah, um, yeah. there's other species as well. So I didn't stick to the commonly known or commonly bred, but also gave an outlook to others because, hey, maybe, maybe. a lot of people live in really cool areas like deserts and so on, and then maybe it's not so easy to get wood, but then there's a lot of cool, say, desert-dwelling species, or there's, um, you live in a rainforest. I mean, this is just an outlook of what all could be bred and partially is bred, um, it's not all. I mean, the world of insects is so huge and the world of beetles is so gigantic. It's that the we... most successful group of insects in the world. I, I mean, it's the most successful group of animals yeah. in all. So they are on every continent in every little spot. So it also gives an yeah. outlook and I hope a lot of people start reading other stuff too so I have yeah. something new to read and learn and think about. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's quite cool. So if you want to buy this book just uh, go to this website here and you will find uh, everything to order. This book from Benjamin Horink that came out just this moment. Beetle, Breeding Beetles, The Substantial Guide. Yeah. Thanks Benjamin. Thank you. Huh? Very nice to be in a video again. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Cool. No, wait. You wanted you wanted to show us something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we didn't tell where we are. Okay. <laughs> oh, we didn't tell where we are. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, so uh, we are here. I mean, you don't see a lot of the, of it. It's the office uh, container of a scientific project that's called Food from Wood. It's a project of the Zurich University for Applied Sciences. We want to find out how we can. A decompose a wood-based material with mushrooms and then the, um, the leftovers of the mushroom produ- production we used to, uh, to uh, rear larvas of coleopteros that are edible and then at the end we have a, a very good um, humus substrate uh, for, for the fee for the soil uh, yes so that's the project food from wood and here we we, we just uh, want to find out how we can produce uh, these uh, these larvas of Tripoxylus dichotomus in a bigger scale so that we probably can one in one day can make a, um, yeah a, an agricultural process out of um, the decomposing pla- food wood based plant material with this larvas and then we would like to harvest the the chrysalids to to eat them because they have no digestive tract. Here's is some of our re- breeding room here and that's the, a little bit uh, how we produced it in, in big numbers. It's not made for pet, 
for the uh, as pet beetle this is really made uh, with the yeah with the idea that uh, one day also probably in Europe and uh, North America we can eat these kind of uh, insects because they are very rich yeah and they are eaten in the in Asia where this insect comes from yeah and it's it's also a guide for uh, for farmers that so that they can imagine how they could do it probably one day if they are into it also in Switzerland yeah what so you I mentioned also is nice the aspect of um, actually bringing the humus back to the to the fields right yeah it's a, it's a vector of transfer of biomass from the forest to the fields uh, to, to, to because if we don't add humus to our uh, acres, acres, acres to our the fields farming land, farming land. Farm, to the farming <laughs> land yes so in the long term we will lose the fertility of the soil so that because the soil is only fertile if it contains a lot of uh, humus and the, uh, the longer we use farmland without putting more and more of the humus uh, to the farmland so it will deteriorate and at the, at the end it will be a desert that's yeah. the problem so but now now we, we, you brought something with, us, with you what <laughs> I'm not that? brought I just picked it up because this is our um, yeah let's 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 make a short intro Breeding dynasties means you need to have a big room. <laughs> breeding <laughs> which, that too. Which very few people have, but luckily the facility here has a lot of has two big rooms for breeding and um, building. We have a rearing room with, with a constant temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Yeah. And um, that's a good place where we said, okay, let's put all the giant beetles we can get here. And um, I just went over and picked one up, which is Megasoma Acteon Acteon. Um, Ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice small lover. That's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's great. It's um, it's not the heaviest we have, but it's um, it's it's a good size, probably a hundred grams or something. Okay. And they develop in, in how to say absolute peace and quiet. It's quite yellow, so I think it will pupate yep. soon. And um, quite a nice giant. So I look forward to get um, to get to see the beetles. It's always very exciting. And the thing is, with them, don't disturb them much. Leave them alone, which is perfect here because at home there's more disturbance, and I need space for all my stag beetles. But that doesn't mean I like these less. <laughs> Thank you, Benjamin. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, for good. <laughs>